Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in saying the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from Samuel. All the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, you are old and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing disappeared. This pleased Samuel when they said, give us a king to govern us. 
Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as they have done to me from the day I brought them out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all of the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king over us so that we, will also, we may also be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgad, and there, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgad, and there they, were, they, there they made Saul king before the king, Lord of Gilgad. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. The word of the Lord. give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O oh Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hand. going straight to the gospel. I'm going right to the gospel.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then Jesus' mother's mother and brothers came and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Please be seated. Jimmy, I'm going to preach from the lectern this morning. And good morning to you all. So, I keep saying it because it's true. It really is great to be back with you all present in the nave this morning. But it's especially exciting today because I have the opportunity to preach the good news to you from Mark's Gospel that includes this wonderful story of Jesus' reputed craziness, his rejection of his own family, accusations of his possession by Satan, his confrontation and arguments with the religious leaders of the day, and his declaration of the eternal and unforgivable sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Easy, right? No problem. We'll jump right in. Then Jesus went back to his hometown, and the crowds came together again so that the disciples could not even eat. When Jesus' family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And I think, well, yeah, I think Jesus' family might be on to something. This whole enterprise of faith and love and service to which Jesus is calling us is more than a little bit peculiar, isn't it? I mean, maybe Jesus is a little off his rocker, maybe We Christians are a little bit off our rockers. We come together to proclaim our faith in the God who created this world in which we live and die, the God revealed in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, who eventually died on the cross at the hands of the very people to whom he came to give life and hope. Then, after being resurrected from the dead, he goes on not to execute vengeance upon the people who hurt him, Not to punish and shame those who were against him, rather he offers them forgiveness of sins and total reconciliation with God. I don't know that such a story makes sense in the eyes of people who believe life is really about taking what we want, or getting back at our enemies, or you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours, or climbing some ladder of power and prestige. No, this thing that we call Christian faith is really different. And it's a cause for confusion for some people. It comes with some changes in thinking, some peculiar ways of looking at the world. And I don't think that's always easy for people to do. And that's why I think Jesus just always seems to find himself somehow at the center of controversy. Now today he's in hot water with his family and with some of the religious leaders in Israel. He has been traveling around the Galilean countryside like some sort of evangelist, casting out demons, healing the sick, eating and fraternizing in the company of lowlifes and sinners and socially unacceptable people. And all the while he's doing that, he's saying that this is the kingdom of God. This is what the kingdom of God is like. And he offers those people grace and acceptance and forgiveness because he claims that is what God wants for them. 
And he offers these things freely, no strings attached. I don't think he means any disrespect for the law, but the message of unconditional love and forgiveness that he offers just seems to be a problem for some people. So Jesus' family, fearing the rumors of his madness, come out to get him. I suppose planning to stop him from continuing such outrageous and potentially dangerous and embarrassing behavior. And the scribes, the respectable people, the interpreters of the Hebrew law, and the beneficiaries of its prestige, having no better explanation for Jesus' popularity and power, claim that he's possessed by Satan. Well, why? Because he preaches forgiveness and salvation and love of God for all people, regardless of their status, their perfect faith, their intelligence or health or race or age or gender. Why is Jesus so threatening that the scribes attribute his work to the devil? I don't want to be too hard on the scribes because the truth is, I just think they want to have a little stability in their world. And Jesus is shaking it up. And don't we like a little stability too? I mean, it's good to feel normal sometimes. Like we've got things pretty right, that God is with us, that justice and morality are things that are clear and readily understandable and largely unchangeable. But when things don't seem that way, when they're not that way, when opinions are all over the map, when things are constantly changing, I suppose people need a reason for that confusion and change and uncertainty, and the devil made Jesus do it seems as good a word as any. But when we want the world to be simple and immutable and in accordance with our own vision of what is right, I'm afraid we can create in our head the sort of world that God did not create for us. A world that stands still or has no surprises that does not forever challenge us to rethink it. Time and again, we're confronted with that stark realism that God is at work in the world and that work may challenge our understanding of life and of history, of other people, maybe even of God. You know, Jesus did that. He called his followers to a new and sometimes unsettling way. He asked them to put others' concerns ahead of their own. He asked them to value the people that others wanted to forget. He asked them to forgive each other and love each other like family. He asked them to love their enemies, and he's still asking for that. So how can we do it? Well, this morning I take my cue from the crowds. So in this story, we have Jesus, we have the disciples, we have his family, we have the scribes, and all of them have some important role to act in this play. But we also have the crowds, those extras in the scene, people not important enough to be named or even get a credit at the end of the movie. They're just sort of set dressing. Or are they? Because I gather that throughout the intense confrontations between Jesus and his family, Jesus and the scribes, the crowd sort of remains focused on Jesus. I bet they aren't especially concerned with matters of righteousness and respectability or the fact that they're interfering with the disciples' lunch plans. I suspect that this crowd which follows Jesus is maybe just unpretentious enough, just needy enough, just broken enough to recognize God's grace when they see it. And Jesus is offering them that grace. And it's more than anyone else has ever offered them. And they know they need it. Well, I think we need it too. I think everybody needs it. I think we as a church are to be about the business of receiving that grace and offering that grace to others. And maybe that simple gift of grace is enough to compel us, like that crowd so long ago, just to stick with Jesus, to keep learning from his words, and to change our views when they need changing. For while some people accuse Jesus of having lost his mind, an humble person in that crowd might suggest that Jesus actually has opened his mind to see the needs of others. 
And while the scribes have accused Jesus of being possessed by Satan, some ordinary person in the crowd might well suggest that Jesus is really possessed of the grace and power of God and the Holy Spirit. And while Jesus speaks of that eternal sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, that act by which we reject the grace of God, separate ourselves from fellowship with the way of the Spirit, you know, maybe a simple person in the crowd might understand that when we lay down our pride and align ourselves with the work of the Spirit, there is no longer any blasphemy that needs forgiving. And while some might suggest that Jesus rejects his family, the person in the crowd might suggest that Jesus has not only not rejected his family, rather he's enlarged that family to welcome each and every one of us. (laughs) Is Jesus out of his mind to want us to be together and well and whole, to work things out, to be in love with God and with each other? I'll tell you that sounds like the most sane thing I've heard in a very long time. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. We pray for those who are sick, particularly Fran McKendry. Lois Young, Maite Fafi, Mary Korsland, Phil and Phil McNary. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those who have died, particularly John McLennan, and for Pat and Bill Sherman, whose earthly remains were buried from St. Stephen's Church on June 3rd, and for Bill Kleins, whose funeral is tomorrow. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly peace. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others.
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. And in this time when we don't have kneelers, please stand. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share a socially distant peace with one another. <laughs> peace, peace. Well, good morning. Please have a seat for just a second. Um, Welcome, it's great to be here with all of you and great to just sort of be back in the swing of things. Jimmy, good job so far with the sound. Jimmy is training on the sound system today, so thanks Jimmy. And um, we also, uh, you might notice, have some technology in this corner. Uh, today is our first Sunday where we're actually gonna be live streaming the 10 o'clock service. So this service is being recorded right now so we can test the audio and make sure everything looks good for 10 o'clock, but um, when you come back in the future, if you come back at 10, um, for the foreseeable future, that service will be live streamed. So that's really wonderful to kind of bring our virtual community and our in-person communities together. Um, this week, we hope that you can continue to join us for our uh, virtual offerings of uh, morning prayer and Compline on Facebook Live. And if you also would check your Sunday news in the back of your bulletin for other events that are coming up, we have a movie night uh, if you have, um, coming up. If you also have uh, children or know folks who have young children, we are starting Outdoor Children's Chapel in a couple of weeks, and we've got lots of other things um, taking place over the summer, so stay tuned. Do you have anything you want to add? Oh, yes, summer ice cream, <laughs> uh, Monday, June 14th, um, 7 p.m. Yes, yeah, Scoops Ice Cream in Bloomington. So if you are an ice cream lover and want to come join the community for that, we hope to see you there. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. When it comes time to receive communion, you can receive bread from one of us and wine from one of us. And then if you would put the cup that you receive the wine in in one of the liturgical waste baskets to the side of you, I'll just sort of, we can sort of motion to you or you can sort of check yourselves for social distancing and just come up as you're able.
please stand as you're able and let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.